Smash Ultimate's main appeal is that every character from all the previous games is playable. Then you have DLC characters you never expect to be in the game, like Terry and Banjo. Ultimate will definitely be the definitive Smash Bros experience for a long time, so it'll probably be decades till we see a new Smash Bros. When the next installment does get announced, the roster will have to be small. The game would be a reboot, so it would be exclusively Nintendo characters, no third-party ones. Think about it. Imagine if every time a Tetris game was released, they added a new piece. Now, I don't know how many variants of Tetris are out there, but let's say the latest installment in the franchise has 20 pieces, and that this will be the last Tetris game for a long time. Fast forward to the year 2100, and a developer out there wants to reboot Tetris. What's he going to do? Make the game with 20 pieces? No. That would be too many. You'd want to keep the game simple and stick with the original 7. Don't know if that was a good analogy, but yeah. The Smash reboot roster should be small and only have Nintendo characters. To start off the roster, you'd have the original 12. Mario, Donkey Kong, Link, Samus, Yoshi, Kirby, Fox, Pikachu, Luigi, Ness, Captain Falcon, and Jigglypuff. It makes sense to keep the first 12 since they've been in all the games. Now I'll go through each of the other characters and give super vague reasons for keeping them in. Peach is a main character in the Mario franchise. Why not keep her in? It's also nice to see that she can actually fend for herself. Bowser is the main antagonist in Mario. Makes sense to keep him in. We're keeping Wario because he kind of stands out from the rest of the Mario cast. I guess that's because he's not much of a Mario character anymore. Zelda and Ganon should stay because what other Zelda characters are there? Tingle? Skull Kid? Give me a break. Zelda's capable of fighting and Ganon is the main antagonist. We're also adding Sheik because she's Zelda and we need another Zelda rep that isn't another Link. Mr. Game & Watch is a classic that should never be taken out. He's part of Nintendo's history. Meta Knight and King Dedede will stay because they are Kirby antagonists. Besides, what other memorable characters does the franchise have? There are a lot of Pokemon in the game currently, but they could literally translate any Pokemon into Smash. So I'm getting rid of all the Pokemon fighters that weren't part of the original 12, except for Pokemon Trainer. Why Pokemon Trainer? Because it's 3-in-1, and it's the original 3 starter Pokemon. Just like Mr. Game & Watch, Rob should stay because he's part of Nintendo's history. Pit and Palutena should be the only Kid Icarus reps. There really aren't any other characters within the franchise that deserve to be in Smash. Zero Suit Samus should stay because it's Samus. Ridley because he's a Metroid antagonist. It's crazy how they managed to translate Ridley into the game, but I really can't see any other Metroid antagonists being playable characters. King K. Rool is a Donkey Kong antagonist. Makes sense to keep him. Animal Crossing has been around for a long time. Why not keep Villager in the game? I don't really like Little Mac and Olimar, but I think they deserve to stay in the game. Shulk is awesome, we're keeping him. Marth, Ike, and Robin should be the only Fire Emblem reps. Marth is a classic. Ike is also a classic. Robin is not a classic, but is unique enough to stay. That's a 35 character roster. There are a few other characters I believe could also stay, but I want it to be as strict as possible, so I didn't include them. These characters are Mewtwo, Dr. Mario, Diddy Kong, Wolf, and Byleth. Mewtwo is a classic Pokemon. Dr. Mario, although just being a heavier Mario, is a classic considering he was in Melee. I don't really care about Diddy Kong, but I can see why people would want him to stay. Wolf is a Star Fox antagonist, and he's honestly way more unique than Falco. Byleth, although just another lame Fire Emblem character, is pretty unique. She definitely didn't deserve all the hate she got when she was announced. The problem is that there were already too many Fire Emblem characters, all of them too similar to Marth. Everyone was sick of Fire Emblem reps. Although Byleth is nothing like Marth, people still ragged on her anyway. I think she deserves a second chance, but I could be wrong. Anyway, I'd say this is a pretty sufficient roster. If I had to be even stricter though, I'd probably remove Jigglypuff, Wario, Olimar, and Robin, but there is a bit of bias in there at that point. DLC is inevitable. A Smash reboot wouldn't be purely Nintendo for long. For third-party characters, I can see Sonic, Mega Man, Pac-Man, and Simon Belmont returning. These are all classic video game characters that deserve proper attention. Now I'll just talk about characters I want in Smash, either an ultimate or an eventual reboot. Elma. Xenoblade deserves another rep. Elma is a perfect character because she's awesome, and Xenoblade Chronicles X is the best game ever made. Too bad it was on the Wii U. If Elma was a Smash character, it would bring attention to Xenoblade Chronicles X, and maybe people would want the game to be remade. Phoenix Wright definitely deserves to be in Smash. 
He was so much fun in Ultimate Marvel vs. Capcom 3. If he was added to Smash, he'd definitely be one of the hardest characters to use, but I would just love to kill somebody by hitting them with an objection bubble. 